Hey everyone, so this right here is the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro that I had at the time. Um, sorry, I'm doing this um, voiceover, you know, years later, but I just thought I'd show you this because this is still relevant information. Um, so I am applying liquid metal onto the CPU die here. Um, so this did not have any dedicated graphics or anything like that. I had one uh, CPU fan, so yeah. So basically, um, I just, this system got really hot whenever I edited videos. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to try to cool it down. And at the time I had liquid metal. So in this case, I, I went ahead and uh, just, of course, disassembled it. And uh, I've done this many times before, I think on this type of computer, maybe about two, two to four times I've taken it apart. Um, and then on other systems and iMacs and everything I've done, you know, countless times. So, but this one had, you know, a little bit of experience. So, you know, I was able to just go ahead and disassemble it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, the difference between the, th this 13 inch MacBook Pro and the one with the touch bar, obviously the touch bar differences, but, um, the one with the non-touch bar did have a removable SSD. Now, it was a uh, proprietary SSD from Apple, but about years later, two, three years later, they did make an adapter for it, so you can actually upgrade your SSD, uh, which I actually did, and um, it turned out to be fantastic. I think I did the max was about one terabyte, and it worked out really well. Cool thing about that adapter was um, I, I still have it, but I, I had a eight terabyte, uh, or I have an 8 terabyte NVMe SSD. It was blank at the time. Um, so I went ahead and, you know, plugged it in and like, like, I, like if I was going to install Mac OS and it actually did read it. Uh, obviously they don't make, you know, um, the SSD. It's the very small ones. You'll see it here on the screen, which one I'm talking about. Um, but, um, it does read eight terabytes. You know, people think it's limited to two because at the time I believe it was either, the maximum was one or two terabytes that you can buy it from Apple's website, and uh, but it does read eight terabytes. You know, they had no problems, uh, you know, installing it and whatnot. I just, you know, just wanted to test it out to see, and but it did work. It was pretty cool. Um, now, here, like, like I'm just cleaning it, and I am applying, uh, you know, nail, um, you know, what is it, a, a clear coat, whatever that you use for like nail polish or whatnot. Um, and I am applying it on the sides. There is no resistors or anything on the side, but um, just that metal kind of like it looks like a metal bracket, but it's just part of the CPU. Um, I'm just applying it around that. Obviously, don't want it to touch that because I am not sure if it's elect you know electrically conductive or not. But also, it, I wanted to use it as a barrier to you know hopefully raise it enough that way it, you know can't squeeze through. Uh, and touch any other components so I did you know I did want to just ensure that it wasn't going to affect anything uh, obviously but um, and especially on a laptop you know you put it in your backpack you know you're moving it around a lot now when it's lying flat you know definitely a safe bet because it's just there but you know laptops are typically put like in some sort of bag or in your arm or some or carrying it and you know it the way it's angled obviously you you're gonna think that you know liquid metal can actually you know fall down and seep into you know the gaps so that's why that uh that clear coat nail polish thingy uh, I apologize if I, I don't know what it is top of my head but that's why I wanted to make sure that I applied that around, ensure that I wasn't going to spill. So never had any issues uh, with it at all whatsoever. Um, I think I sold this laptop a few months uh, later after I applied this, not for any issues with the liquid metal, just I needed something a little bit more powerful. Um, the portability of course was great, but um, I think I got a sweet deal like on a 15 inch at the time. And uh, yeah, so I definitely took, you know, took that deal. Um, and yeah, when I sold it, let them know I had liquid metal and it was bought with no questions asked. And so 
was pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, never had any single issues. Now with performance, it did drop anywhere between 10 to 7 degrees Celsius. Um, the reason I say that is because I, you know, nothing was really sustained. Obviously, uh, temperatures go up and down. But the best I got that I saw was 10 degrees, um, because I would always hit 100, and then when I was video editing, and by the time I used that, I'd hit, you know, maximum was 90 um and then it always like you did 91 92 but 90 it would just stay there um so that was a real treat there to you know to lower the temperature so um if you're going to do this i would definitely say this is all on your own um i personally would do it again um maybe on a lower for me personally like on a lower tiered laptop um, as opposed to something that you spend a couple thousand dollars on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's still possible. From my understanding, those CPUs and even GPUs uh, have resistors around them. So definitely, if you do plan on doing it, um, you know, the clear coat, I would personally choose the clear, the clear thingy coat, whatever, uh, just to ensure that those resistors stay safe. Um, but yeah, I do apologize. Couldn't, you know, I didn't at the time, um, didn't do any benchmarks or anything like that, but I can assure you when I was, uh, editing videos, uh, the maximum I got was about like 93 and, but then it'd go back down to the 90s. So it definitely worked. Uh, obviously you'd want it a lot colder, cooler, but in my case, um, it just, the best uh, was about 10 degrees Celsius. Thanks for watching this video. Um, again, sorry it's a late video, but it's just something I had in my uh, archives and I thought I'd uh, uh, share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one.